Hello, I'm Shane in Sweden and welcome back to our series of videos on how to build an intrusion detection system using C Sharp and Visual Studio. And as always, if you want to follow along and code yourself while you're watching the video, then you can find the source code of the project at this point in time in a link underneath the video. So let's get started. In the last video we were looking at creating a WinPCAP device using Sharp PCAP packages and we were capturing an event that was generated and we'd captured some network traffic and we created a test to check that and in fact it might be useful to run on our test again before we do anything else Okay, but in the last video we said that there was quite a lot of information in our network packet and it would be interesting for us if we could check our packets for other information have a go at extracting real parameters that we would use in our intrusion detection system. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to try to extract some more information from our network packet. Now if we look at our captured information in Wireshark, and we'll just put in our FTP filter again to obtain our first packet. This was the packet we created in our test data. We can actually have a look at our packet and see what information is available to us for use in our intrusion detection system. Okay, we have some text here, and as we can see, that might be useful here with user admin for checking for admin logins or other type of logins. But then we've also got the TCP layer, and from here we can see which ports are being used, the destination port for example. And of course it's to an FTP server, so the, the destination port here is the commonly used FTP port of 21. But we can even see the originating port from the machine as well. So that's in the TCP layer. So we have TCP information. We also have IP information. And here we can see specifically the destination IP address, the IP address of our FTP server, and even the IP address, the machine, which is sending our request. And this, of course, would be very useful for all sorts of intrusion detection check routines. So it'd be useful for us to see if we could extract these items, the source IP address, the destination IP address, and even the port number, source port number, and the destination port number. So that's what we try to do next. If we go back to our sharp PCAP information source, here we can see that when a packet arrives, our packet, which is a raw capture packet, contains this information. We know this because we created it in our test. And here we can see that packet information. But we don't actually do anything about extracting. All we've done is take out the data, convert it to string, and create network alert. So we want to get a bit more information. We want to get some more meat from our packet. So if we go back to our sharp PCAP information tests, here we can create a new test. And here we're going to say TCP and I and IP info extracted. Okay. Now we know from our information from Wireshark what we'd be expecting as our data. So we can actually just test that right away. So let's create uh, so let's create some variables for this. We create destination IP address and then we want source IP address as well the destination port and the source port. Now when we capture our packet as before we expect events to hold this information. In our last test we weren't really interested in what the actual event returned since we just wanted to know if it had occurred or not. So now we actually do want to have the actual information returned. We've got capture event args and center. So if we go 
to our network alert, we can actually take the uh, objects that are involved. And of course, now we want this to be as part of our delegate. And here, instead of just setting an event to be true, which we're not so interested in anymore, instead we want to actually capture the real information and check that it's true. First of all, we want to assert that So we're going to check that we've identified the correct source and destination IP addresses and ports. And then in our event here, we've got to set that information. So Obviously this E does not contain, our event arc does not contain this moment, but it will. Okay. And I'm using the, unfortunately, the Swedish spelling there. So, I think we've got this, I wonder, Rename this as well, actually. It's also Swedish spelling. Uh, it's certainly good, except that this does not contain the destination IP address or the source or the port information. So we have to go back to our A sharp information class. And we're not going to send event args. We're going to send a specialization of this class, which will inherit from the event args and which will include our information. So we need to create a new class here. Which of course inherits from event args and has the very important properties. I think you can guess which ones they are. And here we need to create a new network event arc. And it's this that we'll send through. Okay, 
that's built. So now if we go back to our test. So now we can set our variables here. Uh, first of all, we convert our event arcs argument to our network event arcs. So I'm no longer using our E now we're using our net arcs version. Okay, now we need to set in our expected values here. These we can get from Wireshark. You can see the packet we have here. Let's copy that information. All visible items. Let's go to value. So we've got the source IP address should be equal to that. Destination IP address should be equal to that. If we go up to our port information, or the TCP layer. And we can see its destination is, of course, FTP port 21. And we expect to find that the origination port should be 64,435. Okay. We just assign these initially to get away from the not assign problem. Okay, our test should be ready to run now. If we run that, we would expect it to fail. Let's run. Yeah, there we go. Expected an IP address, instead we got a null. And that's because we are not actually extracting our network information. And that's what we have to do. So to extract our network information, we will instead get our net arguments from our packet. Let's create a method here. Okay. Our sharp pcap uses .NET packet to do this kind of work. So uh, we can create an Ethernet packet. Using packet.net and we're going to work on this packet we sent and we want to set the link layer here to Ethernet and then the packet will be in our packet data but this method returns packet and we actually want an Ethernet packet so we just need to do a conversion Okay, so we've come as far as our Ethernet packet. Now we need to go from Ethernet packet to, first of all, we can look at our uh, our IP information. So if we create a packet of type IP packet. And the Ethernet packet itself that we've created has the methods for this. And we need to tell which type more interested in IP packet. And again, we need to do a conversion. Oh, we might as well do the same for TCP packet while we're here. And 
then we can return a new arguments where we'd have to create a constructor here. Here we can pass in our information that we've got. So we've got our uh, Ethernet packet, we've got our IP packet. IP packet contains the source address. Oh, sorry, it should be destination address. And then it'll be the TCP packet destination IP, destination port, and the IP packet source address, and then the TCP packet source port. So, Okay, so let's run our test again and see what happens now. So we got an error. Uh, so let's have a look at what the problem is. Well, we can see the source destination port 21 looks right. Source port 64443, that looks okay. Uh, it seems to be set here okay. We should perhaps go back and look at our original data. If we go back here to our packet. Ah, right, okay, we can see the source port is 21 because this is a response coming from the FTP server. So our test conditions are wrong. This should be this should be the source port, and this should be the destination port. And if we run our test again, there we're getting our correct results. We now can see that we're starting to extract real network information and we can use this information of course in checking whether or not we should be generating an alert from our intrusion detection system. Uh, so I think that's about all for this video and uh, I'll see you in the next part. Thank you very much.